Oh, the White House saying case closed on the Mueller probe as the focus now shifts to investigating the investigators and how the whole thing started in the first place. You know, Attorney General William Barr is looking into the origins of the case. This as House Intelligence Committee Chairman, Democrat Congressman Adam Schiff, slam Barr's review of Mueller's probe as politically motivated. And Schiff wants to do now keep tabs on what the Attorney General says and does. Schiff sending letters to all the heads of our country's intelligence agencies, asking them to share with his panel any materials that are handed over to the Attorney General. Here's the Congressman yesterday at an event in California keeping up his calls for Mueller to testify before Congress. Bob Mueller said, I really don't want to testify. But he should. I think for this former Marine, there is one more service to undertake, and that is to testify before Congress to answer not just our questions, but your questions. I don't think it's sufficient to speak for 10 minutes and drop the microphone. So what does all this mean going forward? Alex Little joins us, criminal defense attorney, as well as a former prosecutor and former assistant U.S. attorney in Nashville, Definitely. as always. Alex, good to see you. you. You know what the critics are saying, uh, that Barr misrepresented Mueller's conclusion on why he couldn't yeah. indict on obstruction of justice. But the DOJ spokesman says, though there is no conflict, then you have Schiff uh, saying he's going to oversee and monitor the AG. What does that mean and how does he do that? Well, I think what Schiff is talking about specifically is he's concerned about this sort of IG or the investigation that the attorney general says he's going to do of the investigation and whether he's going to be able to sort of pull up some dirt to dirty up how it began or how it proceeded. But I think the real you know, news this week, the only particular news was the fact that Bob Mueller chose to make a statement. He didn't have to make a statement. Nobody made him do that. It certainly wasn't a mandate for his position. And when somebody like that takes a sort of an extraordinary step outside of his mandate to talk to the public. I think we should take note. It's pretty clear he had two audiences. I think one was congressional Democrats, one was congressional Republicans. He's telling people like Adam Schiff, you know, I'm not going to save you. I'm not going to be your savior, and I sure don't want to testify. I think he also was telling congressional Republicans, there's a lot in my report you need to look at, you need to read it, and you need to consider your constitutional duty about how to go forward and investigate it. And you know, he came under criticism, though, for, for saying that they could not clear the president or come up to that uh, point of view in terms of obstruction yeah. of justice, that, that saying that is unfair. Well, you know, I think the, the reality is if there was no evidence the president had done anything wrong, he could have cleared him. He, but he said he couldn't do that. And so to anybody who I think took third grade reasoning, that would suggest that there is a real reason to believe the president could not be cleared because he's guilty, or at least is indicating that he might be guilty. And his answer there was very clear. I can't do that job in the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice doesn't indict its own presidents. We have a constitution. The constitution says when a president commits misconduct or is suspected of misconduct, you, Congress, have to do that. Right now, we got a lot of folks in Congress who don't want to do that. And, well, and also, in terms of Mueller not wanting to testify, I made it clear during uh, his 10 minute uh, sure. speech you know, you know what he's going to do. If, they, if he's called before them, he's going to say, read page 239. That's exactly read page right. 542. You know, Congressman, the Chairman, thank you. That's on page 451. I mean, what yeah. will that be like if he just says, refer to this page and that? It's well, written about the report. I think there's two pieces of this which is really interesting. One is he said it. He said, my report is my testimony. There's no way he's going to answer hypotheticals about if, if President Trump weren't the president, could he be indicted? That's not his style. He will direct them back to the report. The second side of this, though, is the media has done such a good job, and President Trump has done, has been so insistent, and his allies have been so insistent that he was cleared. I mean, that was the whole charade of the first statement from the attorney general, that somehow this report cleared him. And there's a good segment of the public that don't believe he's done anything wrong. And so when you saw the town hall where all these Republicans in a district in Grand Rapids, Michigan, with Justin Amash, came out and heard him talk about why he thinks there should be impeachment proceedings, it broke through to some folks in that in that world that there is evidence of wrongdoing. And so if Bob Mueller sat down and had to point out those pieces where the president has uh, potentially committed wrongdoing, that may change the public per the public perception of what's going on. And others are focusing on what they say is the wrongdoing by the FBI officials and others at the beginning of this investigation. Sure. Let me have you listen to the attorney general talking about his probe of how this whole thing started. I think it's important that we not, in, in this period of intense partisan feeling, uh, destroy our institutions. I think one of the ironies today is that people are saying that it's President Trump that's shredding our institutions. I really see no evidence of that. From my perspective, 
the idea of resisting a democratically elected president and basically throwing everything at him and, and you know, uh, really changing the norms on the grounds that we have to stop this president. That's where the shredding of our, of our norms and our institutions is occurring. Listen to his words very carefully. He says, resisting a democratically yeah. elected president, although some uh, in law enforcement uh, say that they, they felt they had legitimate reason to investigate. Well, look, you know, Bob Mueller said himself this week that the Russians were trying to get this democratically elected president elected. So there certainly was something to investigate. I think, you know, Attorney General Barr's conduct in the past few weeks particularly is going to go down um, in history as really shameful conduct. I mean, the statements about destroying institutions, you know, he's talking about a president who repeatedly, you know, demeaned the FBI, its officials at every level, and, and said essentially this was a witch hunt. It wasn't a witch hunt. It was being run by an incredibly competent and, law, you know, skilled investigator with service on both sides of the aisle. So I don't think these investigations that Bob Barr is, is hatching up are going to go anywhere. The real question is when people start to look at the facts, where is that going to lead? And right now it's in Congress's hands and that's where you have to see what happens. Well, some of the others disagree. Let me read you what uh, George Papadopoulos has, has tweeted, of course. This is two of his tweets recently. And this is the felon who was, you know, in the process of communicating with the Russians, but I'm sure his tweet's going to tell he, us. Yes, I know. He did plead guilty. The line of the FBI about having contact with, the, with a Russian agent, uh, this is what he said, quote, how the hell could I have a FISA investigation issued on me when I have never even traveled to Russia, let alone met a Russian official? Can't wait to see what's in the bogus warrant. Hammer is coming down on the other side. America, remember this, the FBI under Jim Comey was trying to entrap Americans working for President Trump. Disturbing evidence from the Mueller report that I was being spied on for my legitimate ties to the energy business in Israel by the previous administration. Incredible spying going on. Alex, what would you say to Mr. Papadopoulos and others who take that tack? Well, look, I, I would say the same thing I'd t tell my children if they said our dog was a unicorn. I'd say, no, that's not true. That's a dog. Sometimes you have to be direct and you have to be forceful about the facts. And here, this is where the media, I think, really owes the public um, better service. Because a lot of the things that are being said, particularly about the FISA process, are just flatly not true. The FISA courts are run by incredibly distinguished, long-tenured judges, many of whom, most of whom at this point, were appointed by Republicans. And so it's not as if they they would allow some, you know, partisan hack investigation of a low-level staffer. There were serious things going on. The Russians were trying to infiltrate the campaign, and the FBI and our counterintelligence counter services had not only a right but a duty to investigate that. So, you know, George Papadopoulos, I I'm sure he's going to say whatever he can at this point to make himself feel better and to sort of stoke up some sympathy. But the facts are, this was a legitimate investigation. It's produced some really stunning evidence, and the public and Congress are going to have to deal with it. Yeah, and, and quickly. You, you've actually prepared a FISA I have, warrant. yeah. So I mean, I, what is know, it like? How many pages is that? And can well, someone who, you know, wants, wants to go get after Trump, can sure. they just, you know, get a judge to sign off? You can't just get a police officer to run down the street and get a FISA warrant. These are incredibly detailed, the most sophisticated application required in government investigations. It's 400, 500, sometimes 1,000 pages of documents you've got to prepare for a very tenured senior uh, federal judge who knows what they're doing. It goes through multiple layers of review at the Department of Justice. Um, these are serious c considerations that are made when they do such a thing, and uh, it, it's inconceivable that such a thing could be politicized. All right, Alex Little, uh, who has prepared a FISA warrant. Alex, as always, thank you for your insight. Thank you. Of course.